due to the following special program, Inside Edition and American Journal will not be seen tonight, but return tomorrow night at their regular times. Jacksonville Jaguars, Relive the Moment, is sponsored in part by Charter by the Sea. If you can't get help at Charter, get help somewhere. And your Florida Buick dealers. And by University Medical Center. Well, like you said to me, on your way to Chicago, Deb, we're not going to get a team. Right, so don't Somebody get make me a liar. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, being out on the street and talking to people and listening to Sports Talk Radio and doing Sports Talk Live and, and, and talking to people, it was like the fifth thing on the list. Is Florida going to win the SEC? <laughs> right, right, Is right. Is Florida State going to win the national championship? You know, there were a lot of things people were talking about, and they said, oh, yeah, that's right. Isn't Tuesday the announcement? Yeah. It was way down the list, and like you said, people had steeled themselves against any kind of disappointment. And they, they, I think so many people felt like they wanted to be that old word, cautiously optimistic, but even more than that, they didn't even want to say it. That's I mean, right. They just wanted to leave it alone, so if it didn't happen, I didn't mention it. I didn't worry about it. You know, I felt it. for you guys, when you're up in Chicago when this decision came down, because you didn't know what was happening here until you saw it when you came home into the airport and you saw it when you came home and you both commented everybody's smiling it's like a different city <laughs> and i'm in the midst of all this going how do i get through to sam and tom what is happening here <laughs> it was uh it was magnificent i mean the celebration on wednesday night and certainly the spontaneous celebration on tuesday night uh, a lot of people say well was it as big as charlotte's was it this that well, there's no question about that i mean the the euphoria of even people who just stayed at home and watched it on the streets. You got to remember too, the announcement that, that we had came at 4.12 in the afternoon. A lot of people were at work. That's a lot right. of people drove home in their cars and went, what? what? We got a team? <laughs> you know though, Sam, as, as time has gone on, I found more and more people who said, I just stopped what I was doing and turned on the television, or I stopped what I was doing and turned on, you know, listen to you guys on the radio. I mean, I knew we weren't going to get a team, but, but I had to just check and see, just, had just to, to be sure. You yeah. know, I won't tell anybody that I'm looking, okay? <laughs> Well, this will sure give us an opportunity to give people an opportunity, as we say, to relive the moment, to look at that 48 hours where everything happened so fast and so euphorically, if I can invent a word. There were so many priceless moments. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tom Wills, reporting live from Chicago, where the NFL owners are just about to begin their climactic meeting. So tell me, what do you think is going to happen this time? I think St. Louis will probably get it. Which city should get a football team? Just what that recommendation might be, however, remains a secret. They had me convinced a month ago that we, we had a shot at it, and uh, now I, don't, I just don't believe it. We'll be here through the meeting, and as soon as there are any late-breaking developments, any announcements, any details, any good reliable leaks will bring them to you right away. One of the most interesting moments I think was when you got it confirmed that the finance and expansion committees had in fact recommended Jacksonville. You and I, uh, Gene Frenette from the Times Union and their photographer along with our photographer Kevin Talley went up to the room. All the media was invited. We just happened to be the only media that went. We were allowed to be there from 2 o'clock until 2.45. Mm -hmm. 2.45 came around and uh, the security guard from the NFL came into the room and said, okay, all media's got to leave. Well, I had said earlier to David Selden, the president of the Jaguars, look, unless they specifically ask me to leave, I'm going to try to stick around. I mean, there's a certain amount of espionage, I guess, that goes on <laughs> in reporting a good story. So I, it was a suite, we were there, it was a kind of a suite, Wayne Weaver suite, mm -hmm. and um, so I just kind of stood around the corner. Well, when they asked everybody to leave, I'm looking at stadium plans, right? Acting like I'm somebody... <laughs> the architect. Uh, yeah, exactly, <laughs> somebody important, exactly. So uh, about 15 minutes later, the uh, security guard comes back in, now it's 3 o'clock. Security guard comes back in and says, uh, all media's got to leave, and looks right at me and looks right at David Selden, and David Selden looked around and said, do you see any media in here? I thought he was joking. <laughs> he actually didn't see me because I oh, had these stadium plans up and he didn't see me. The guy said no, so he left. Now it gets to be 315. The guy comes back in again and says, uh, <clears throat> look, we got to make sure that all the media is out of here. Well, by now I know something's up. Yeah. I mean, something's going on. Selden has come in and has said, there's an unconfirmed report that we've gotten the 
expansion and finance committee's recommendation. I heard that and I said, uh, Dave, you think I ought to go? I probably ought to go. He said, you probably ought to go. I said, good luck, shook his hand, got I downstairs. I get downstairs to talk to you and I was, I was a little cagey about it because I was afraid to raise people's expectations. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we called the newsroom and it was just like in the movies. Nancy Shaffron <laughs> says to me, Sam, are you confident of your sources <laughs> that you can go on the air and report this? And I said, Nancy, I've got it independently confirmed by three sources. And Including she, a source who was in, in the room. room. In the room. Nancy says, we're on cellular phone. She says, hang up the phone and put your earpiece in. <laughs> I hung up the phone, I put my earpiece in, I looked in the camera and I heard Deborah say, we have just received word from Chicago that a source close to touchdown Jacksonville has been told the Finance and Expansion Committees voted for Jacksonville. This is unconfirmed. We go now to Tom Wills and Sam Kavaris, who are live in Chicago to hear what more they've heard. Sam, Tom, it's pretty exciting. It How is about exciting. That? It certainly is. And Deborah, I have confirmed through sources in Touchdown Jacksonville that, in fact, the committee has made Jacksonville as a recommendation to the general ownership. Now, whether or not uh, the ownership follows that recommendation is up in the air, although never in the history of the NFL have they ever disagreed with an ownership uh, with a recommendation from a committee. We have just learned that Touchdown Jacksonville says that it has been confirmed that Jacksonville has become the 30th NFL franchise. Holy sh This, this whole thing has been a roller coaster. That'd be the best way that anybody would describe it. And we had a low moment after that report. We were standing there when a reporter from St. Louis went on air in his city and said that there was only one banner behind the NFL's oh, blue right. curtain mm -hmm. lying on the floor, and it was the banner of the St. Louis Stallions. It's like, oh, jeez, oh, no. man, that, if that's true, wow, that's got, you know, that's, that's a pretty good piece of information. So. I mean, I'm, I'm not really known for doing this kind of thing, but I just walk back there. And I hear these people saying, if these reporters come back here, make sure you throw them out. <laughs> and I walk back there behind that blue curtain, and there was, in fact, just one banner lying on the floor. There were two or three more piled over in the corner, but there was one lying by itself. And I could see the color gold. Well, I didn't know what the stallion's colors, colors were. were yeah. mm -hmm. And they, like, caught me and chased me out of there. Mm -hmm. So now I know what banner that was it was lying on the floor it was the jacksonville it was ours. jaguars it banner was ours. and then okay you go on the air we got about 30 minutes there right when we are we reported that the finance and expansion committee made that recommendation we reported that at about 325 okay at about 335 we, and we said shortly thereafter now we should be hearing officially that jacksonville is going to get the full recommendation at about 335 we had confirmed that 
uh, well ahead of, of anybody else and went on the air and said it. Uh, but then, like you said, we had about 30 minutes, 35 minutes before Paul Tagliabue came out and said that. And what I never knew that Tom told me after he got back is that we ended up getting the word in the newsroom before you heard it in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Now, don't give away any of our trade secrets no. here, but, but <laughs> I won't we got a phone call. All I know is our executive producer came running in the newsroom, and of course, Rob and I are sitting there ready to go, and she goes, we got it, we got it. And I said, we got it, what do you mean? Who's confronted with it? Go to Chicago, go to Chicago. So we come back up, and I, I, I'm thinking to myself, oh, does she mean the team? Is that what she's talking about? What do we got? And I pitched you all, and that was it. Now wait a minute. This is a special edition of Eyewitness News. Good afternoon, I'm Deborah Giannola's with Rob Sweeting. Jacksonville, are you sitting down? Here we go, here we go, here we go. Yeah, yeah they said it. I think that's better. Thank you. We have just learned that Touchdown Jacksonville says that it has been confirmed that Jacksonville has become the 30th NFL franchise. Holy sh! We so got it. We need somebody to pinch us. We don't know that. We don't know, we don't know for sure. We're waiting for the announcement. There is a huge group of the media over there. And Paul the Harden, I can see him over there. He's wearing a Jacksonville Paul Harden. Oh hat. He's giving Don thumbs Davis. up. Come on down. They said, you got it. Can you believe it? How about them? <laughs> and now, yes! <laughs> get the team. Football fans, pinch yourself. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Official yet. So I don't believe it till they come out and make it official. Let's go now live to Chicago. Just in case it's time. Here's the commissioner. Oh, Here's the commissioner. Uh, membership has selected Jacksonville as the 30th NFL club. You make me want to lift my head up and shout. Pull my head back and shout. Come on now. Shout. Come on now. Shout. Come on now. Shout. Come on now. Shout. It was a very strong feeling that uh, Jacksonville is a, uh, a hotbed of football interest, that it's in a part of the country which has tremendous interest in football and the NFL. There was a, uh, a feeling that uh, the Southeast is uh, the fastest growing part of the country, that the NFL, even with a team in Charlotte, is underrepresented uh, in the Southeast, and that putting a team in Jacksonville would provide a, a very strong base for the National Football League in what is uh, if not the fastest growing part of the country, certainly one of the fastest growing parts of the country. Uh, needless to say, uh, Wayne Weaver and his colleagues uh, are a very strong ownership group. Uh, the civic and business community support in Jacksonville has been uh, very, very favorably, favorably viewed by the membership. So I think those were the basic considerations, as well as the fact that uh, the Gator Bowl, when it's renovated, be a tremendous football stadium. In the upset as big, perhaps <laughs> bigger, than when Joe Namath predicted victory in a Super Bowl three. I just want to say, uh, Commissioner, that uh, the decision that the NFL made here today, that Jacksonville, is certainly going to make you proud. We're going to be a great new partner for the NFL. Well, we're and I, I thank you for the confidence. Let's go down to Kim Vadas. Kim Vadas is at the Chamber of Commerce, where a news conference is about to start. Is that right, Kim? Yes, the Chamber of Commerce is having its own little victory party right now. They threw confetti when the announcement hit. They're donning their Jacksonville Jaguar caps and their touchdown Jacksonville caps. Right now, Mr. Adam Herbert, Dr. Adam Herbert with the Chamber, is about to make a statement to give the Chamber's reaction to what is an absolutely unbelievable announcement for Jacksonville today. Dr. Herbert? Congratulations, Jacksonville. We have finally accomplished our 15-year goal to become an NFL city. Winning this franchise has been a true team effort, which has included an outstanding leadership group led by Wayne Weaver and Tom Petway, a visionary city government led by Ed Austin and Don Davis, some very passionate football fans. Football passion, and he reiterated that again at the podium. There's no question that uh, we, we kept selling hard that we had football passion in our marketplace. We had the only game in town advantage. That's an enormous advantage. We don't have other things competing for the sports entertainment dollar in Jacksonville. That was a very persuasive part of our argument. But we've, we've got a city that rallied behind us, that, that stood up when we needed them to stand up, and that didn't go unnoticed uh, around the NFL with the other owners. What's the first thing you're going to do when you get back to Jacksonville? Celebrate. <laughs> Joining us now is uh, Mayor Ed Austin. 
Thank Congratulations. You. Tom, it was an exciting day for Jacksonville, a great day for Jacksonville. I'm telling you, our, our community took a, a quantum leap forward today. We've got, uh, as I've said a hundred times, a thousand times, we've got the greatest city in the southeast United States, but this gives us the impetus to go on now into, a, into the next tier. We now truly are a big league city in every respect. A month ago, you thought this would not happen in your life. A lifetime. month ago, uh, I was very disappointed. The handwriting was on the wall that uh, that they were giving St. Louis an opportunity. And you said a while ago, you know, just 30 months ago, just 30 days ago, I didn't like that guy. Yeah. The commissioner yeah. came on. I oh, say that. And I said, amen. And I said, but I love him tonight when he made that announcement. Yeah. And uh, certainly we were all disappointed 30 days ago. And, and uh, but, but finally, you know, uh, 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 good, you know, I was always taught when I was a good that, yeah. that the good guys won. You know, I always wanted to be the yeah. Lone Ranger. I want to be the guy that rolled in on the white horse and hollered high old silver and saved the, saved the good guys that shot up the bad guys. It really proves that the good guys still win. Mayor, okay. well, Mayor we're going to come back to you a little later on, okay? But right now we're going to go live to Jacksonville Beach. Congratulations, Mayor. <laughs> go live there he is at the t-shirt shop. We're in the sportswear business. Yeah. Richard? <laughs> uh, Richard we're outside Sportswear Express here at Jacksonville Beach, and there are a good we number of people here who want their shirts, and they want a sweatshirt. The, the owner, Kevin Way, just uh, peeked out to see the crowd. He can't believe it. He'd love to sell them a shirt, but I think he uh, underestimated the demand a little bit. It uh, appears to be overwhelming to him. We have cars lined up for blocks, literally here, on 4th Street on Jacksonville Beach and if anyone has driven on the beach knows <laughs> this guy here is willing to pay $100 look at this you said $100 I can get you action. said it. Major Star Man will sell it to you. I'll go ahead. You said you would. I'm kidding. Well, you got next one? Kidding. You're willing to pay $100 for yeah. a Jasmine Jaguars t-shirt? Yeah. For so the first know. one, yeah. yeah. You could buy one tomorrow at the store for $15, for, probably. It'll be worth $200, you know, next week. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we need to get a tape. I'll have the only one. <laughs> <laughs> for tonight, you will, anyway. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, he is not alone. Look at all the people here. What do you guys want here? We want t-shirts! And the bad news is, I don't think they're going to get one. Uh, J.C. Penney's and the Sports of Foot and a number of other outlets will have shirts they promise tomorrow morning, but I don't think these people are going to get the shirts they're after. We're live from Jacksonville Beach. I'm Richard Ransom. And Richard, I have to ask you, though, do you think all those people showed up just because they saw you on TV saying it's okay to come I down here and buy so. t-shirts? I think that's exactly what happened. Kevin Way, who's the owner of Sportswear Express, I said, you know, would you like, if somebody wants a shirt tonight, can they get one? He goes, well, I'm a businessman like anybody else, anybody else right. sure. And, uh, so you started the whole thing, Richard. Yeah, he started. Not a, let's not take responsibility if we don't have to. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Richard. Okay. Robin Saran is upstairs in our studios with some very distinguished guests. We promise you we would take you back to Robin, and there she is. Robin? Robin, do they believe it now? Now I think they do <laughs> believe it. You know, you were talking about the Jacksonville Bulls. That seems like so long ago. Former Bulls coach, former Green Bay Packers coach Lindy and Fonny joins us now. What do you think? What are your feelings? Well, I'd like to be in the T-shirt selling business right now. That's what I'd like to <laughs> I'd tell you what, that's what I'd like to do. But, uh, you know, I, I, everybody said that this is, uh, this is an upset, but... Uh, I, for one, for a long time, have been saying that this is not an upset. I, I really think the uh, the best team won. As an old football coach, you never go into a game thinking you're going to lose a thing, and and I never thought Jacksonville would lose this thing. There were so many priceless moments before the announcement was made, when the, the Jacksonville delegation had been told that they were getting the team, and their city council president, Don Davis, standing there with his Jaguars hat on. Well, if that isn't a tip-off <laughs> as to what's about to come, I don't know what it is. But you yet, couldn't believe it, could you? No, exactly. No. Exactly. You Everybody had to hear, had to hear it, it from, from the Paul lips. Tagliabue's lips. I didn't, you know, and I guess we'll get to this later, but uh, I believe that at one point, we had talked to Ron Weaver, we had talked to all kinds of people. When Paul Tagliabue said it, it didn't really hit me until the two guys on either side of Tagliabue pulled down the covers that covered up the icon, the Jaguar, yeah. and the logo. And I found myself going like this, literally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was just jaw-dropping gawk, like, that's us. It was unbelievable. You know what, too? After all these many months and years of comparing ourselves and being compared to all these other cities that wanted an NFL team, I really felt like on Tuesday and Wednesday, we stopped comparing ourselves to mm -hmm. anybody else. We were Jacksonville, and we are proud. You know, and from Wayne Weaver to Ed Austin to the average football fan, everybody was playing it cool. We're cool, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. We're steeled. We're men. <laughs> we're women. We can take this. <laughs>
And the next thing you know, they announce it's us. And Ed Austin, what is he, six feet three inches tall? Six is five. He's jumping yeah. up and down like he's a high school <laughs> cheerleader or something. Yeah, it was certainly a lot of pent up. Many people say 15 years of pent up emotion that uh, enabled everybody to finally walk the streets with a smile and say, uh, I live in Florida. Not only do I live in Florida, I live in Jacksonville. This is, this is a win for the Jacksonville community. We couldn't have done it without the uh, tremendous support of both the citizens at large and the business community in Jacksonville. And we thank you. And we're going to have the darndest celebration beginning tonight. I don't know how you didn't cry. Oh, oh, I did, but I wasn't on. <laughs> I did. And as a matter of fact, when he said Jacksonville, you could hear screams go up all over the station. Like, oh my God, it really is true. <laughs> and then Jake and I laughed later because I said, I hated that man a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, he said, it's exactly what he was thinking, and now I love this man, you know, he's brought us his good it, news. Uh, it, it's certainly one of the defining moments in the history of the city, uh, without question, only because it brings so many different segments of society together. Ah, I feel good. Store at the Avenues Mall. 
300 people here waiting in line for t-shirts. They're handing out numbers. We know that's why why there's over 300 people here. I'm number 59. One big party, Mary. That's an understatement, Deborah. This was a gathering place for hundreds of fans tonight, many of whom climbed on board buses to welcome Wayne Weaver home. Now, if you talk to many of them, they tell you, ah, I knew it all along. I knew Jacksonville would get a team. But it's clear here tonight that many of them are surprised, thrilled, but surprised, and they are ready for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey, 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 hey. These football fans know this is Wayne's world now, for real. Their new idol, Wayne Weaver, the new owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. We want you, Panthers, we want you. Come on, come on. These people are nuts, and I'm really excited about it. And they're doing a good job, and they're going to buy up the remaining tickets that are left. They're going to buy up the sweatshirts and the T-shirts and all those great things. You know you can buy them tomorrow morning. Oh, uh, no, I want it now. <laughs> now. Definitely now. Some fans waited hours to buy a piece of wearable history. The t-shirts here sold out fast. Last one today, right now. We're coming back with some more. 150 of them in just 10 minutes. Do you have cold fever? Not anymore. I've got Jaguar fever. I've kept this in mothballs for 15 years. We've been waiting on this a long time since way back when we were trying to get the cold. So we're happy. It's been a long time coming. You could call it one huge pep rally with busloads of fans hitting the road to welcome their hero home. We're in shock. This is incredible. <laughs> we started this thing 15 years ago with Mayor Jake Eyeball, and today it became a reality. But don't expect any peace in this town now. No, no peace in Jacksonville tonight, but take a look on top of the Independent Life Building. Go Jaguars. It's clear and bright lights. All night, people have been asking, where is Wayne? Where is Wayne? I don't know how many times people have asked me that, but they did get a chance to give Mayor Ed Austin a hand tonight for a job well done. We're live from the Jacksonville Landing. I'm Mary Bear. Back to you. You know, Mary, earlier tonight, somebody said Jacksonville Jaguar fans will be insane. I think they were right. Boy, Deb, I can't really hear you. I know that you asked me a question. All I hear is a crowd behind me. This is enthusiasm, Jacksonville enthusiasm at its greatest. These folks are so excited. They are so thrilled that it has finally happened here in Jacksonville. A dream has become reality. Well, thank thank you, you, Mary. Thanks a lot. Now, the landing is not the only party in town. Eyewitness News Nightly reporter Jeff Weinsier found people all over Jacksonville going nuts. Jacksonville. <laughs> they were passing out cigars at String Sports Bar in Neptune Beach. They were celebrating the birth of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey, yeah, I thought we'd always get a team. It was in the cards for us. I was real excited today. I was waiting for it. Uh, I wanted to see it happen for Jacksonville. I'll be there every game. I sat through every game we've had thus far. The Sharks, the Express, the Bulls. I'll be there every game this time. Well, I was born and raised here, and I think it's the greatest thing that ever happened. I think most people in the area are, are in shock. Shock right now? Yeah, a little bit. I, th I think everybody's very, very excited, and, and I think this area is finally going to be able to prove what what kind of passion they have for football. While many here are already sporting their official Jaguar T-shirts, Paula O'Bannon didn't want to wait in line. She made her own. I thought that this was better because it's like we are spontaneous and just great. And some here were even guessing who the Jaguars would play in their first game and even who would win. It's going to be with the Indianapolis Colts. And the news is out. The Jaguars are already a 10-point favorite. Well, many I talked to say they were optimistic throughout the whole NFL process. Others I talked to say they never thought Jacksonville had a chance. I was talking about it at lunch saying St. Louis has got it for sure. I mean, the, city, the NFL put us off for so long, and today was just a total surprise. About 3 o'clock, the rumors started happening. Hey, the radio's announcing that we got a team. Do you believe it? Not yet. Maybe tomorrow. Jeff Weinser, Channel 4 Eyewitness News, Night Beat.
But here across Jacksonville, what a day. In fact, it was a rip-roaring day with the Jaguar here. The temperatures were up close to 70. And I tell you, we, I'm proud of you guys. We love you. We love you. You're the spirit. You're the spirit. You're the spirit. You're the spirit. Once again, Jacksonville as a town, if, they, if everybody is focused on a common goal, that they can reach that goal for so long, for 15 years in fact. There had been a perception that no matter how hard we had tried, no matter how focused we all were on all parts of the, the city, through all cultures, through all the socioeconomic strata that we've got, that no matter how focused we were on one thing, we couldn't get there. Couldn't get there. Well, on November 30th, we got there. Exactly. Let's do that Jacksonville cheer, Ready Tiffany. Come on. Cheer, 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 we Give go. me a J. Pam Rittenhouse, um, I welcomed her back, and she said, I said, oh, you did such a great job from Charlotte. She goes, but I missed the party. <laughs> Sunny 107.9, it's Bob Lacey, it's Sherry Lynch, it's 20 minutes before 8 o'clock, and with us right now... Believe it or not, even today, the Charlotte airwaves were still full of cracks about Jacksonville. Actually, now the state of Florida has three professional teams. Uh, Miami, Tampa, and Tallahassee. Remember Charlotte's Sunny 107? They're the ones who brought out the pig last month to make fun of Jacksonville's NFL hopes. Let's do that Jacksonville cheer, Ready Tiffany. Come on. Cheer, 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 we go. Give me a J. <laughs> that was chapter one in this Charlotte Jacksonville catfight. Chapter two. Right after Charlotte got its NFL team, we had to go back and pay off a football bet by kissing the resident pig at Sunny 107. All right. Here you go. Yeah! She did it. She did it. Oh, I can hear him talking. This feels a lot better than last time. Chapter three, it's a month later, and the Jacksonville Jaguars come calling. Ours glitters and yours doesn't. Well, there, there, you ripped us off. Trashy Jacksonville woman won't wear it if it doesn't glitter. <laughs> right, so now, we got some gold glitter now Bob was supposed to do what I did and kiss the pig today, but the pig was nowhere in sight, perhaps fearing that Jaguars would turn her into bacon. 
So we had to improvise. My mother, when she wanted to tell somebody where to get off, yeah. she would say, kiss my foot. So I have brought a sock so that this one might be easy for you, Bob. I got to kiss your feet. You are going to kiss my foot. No yeah, biting now, OK? Just a okay. little love bite. A little OK. okay. It's a jaguar foot now. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know she's got an extra, she's got extra toes on that. Mm. <laughs> It's the best. This is the most excitement I've had in a while, pal. <laughs> so, all the teasing, fun and games is past now. Time to get out of this place, go home to Jack's, home of the Jaguars. Manuel, they have given us a parking ticket. While we were here at the station, they gave us a parking ticket. It says, parking violation, license number one floor on, make of auto, Bronco, Florida limo. What did we violate? They wrote in here, transplanted Yankee in Southerners space. So just when you think all this is over and done with, it's not over and done with. I don't think it's ever gonna be over, do you? In that other cat city, I'm Pamela Rittenhouse, Channel 4 Eyewitness News. I'll tell you what, they, uh, they really gave us the business an awful lot when they got a team on October 26th, and we didn't. And uh, now we also have a team, thanks in part to their celebration and the kind of um, paraphernalia that they bought, a million dollars, yeah. million pieces of paraphernalia in a week, really turned the owners' heads, I think, in terms of a hot market, a southeastern market where football is, is uh, kind of the king sport. But uh, talk about a rivalry. I mean, these two cities... Uh, you know, Charlotte thinks that the NFL neighborhood all of a sudden got bad because we got That's in it. That's right, right, right. And uh, we have always looked at Charlotte like, well, last time I was there, I must have missed the part where the streets are lined with gold. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know, but it's, uh, it's uh, you know, there is that, there is certainly that burgeoning rivalry, and there is a good possibility that these two teams will end up in the same division. Well, and it's Ooh. a perfect matchup for a rivalry. You've got the Jaguars against the, pa against the Panthers. You have one expansion team against another expansion team. And I didn't have much contact with just average North Carolinians. But the reporters from Charlotte really gave us a hard time <laughs> oh, through really this did. whole process. Now, the public doesn't care about that. That's between us. But, um, I mean, I think we can say they treated us like, what are what? you doing here? They exactly. treated us like... We're the Queen City. You right. guys are the Joker. I mean, you got to be kidding. We're getting a team, That's and you right. really have a lot of nerve. The people in Jacksonville really have a lot of nerve in even asking for a team. <laughs> Didn't we, though? Well, no. then why do they want to beat us so bad? Jaguar shirts were going as fast as the sales clerks could ring them up. And at this J.C. Penney store, the first batch was gone in about two hours.
Jacksonville is being talked about all over the country. Wednesday, we were on the front page of newspapers. I was up in Pittsburgh, and we were on the front page of the Sports Gazette. Of the, uh, the, we're on the front page of the Post Gazette sports section. Now, there are companies up there that have never heard of Jacksonville who are saying, Jacksonville? Hmm. Let me write that name down. <laughs> Let me call down there and find it's out if they like have any of this kind of technical expertise or wonder what the tax base is there kind mm -hmm. of thing. You it's know? like if, you know, if Jacksonville is such a hot market for football, what else is Jacksonville a hot market for? I see trees of green. Jaguar fans started hunting for their shirts early, lining up before the stores even opened. And with their credit cards as ammunition, they finally made their target, the sales counters. Jaguar shirts were going as fast as the sales clerks could ring them up. And at this JCPenney store, the first batch was gone in about two hours. Unfortunately for some football fans, they've spent part of their day waiting in line for t-shirts. Some even waited in line to get on a waiting list to get a t-shirt. But after all, the city has waited 15 years for a football team, so what's a few extra minutes? And hoping to satisfy all Jaguar customers, most retailers were up at the crack of dawn, waiting for their orders to be filled. Here at Sportswear Express, they've been working round the clock, pumping out a thousand shirts an hour. And it's that football spirit that's driving Jacksonville crazy for Jaguar t-shirts. But even at this feverish pace, t-shirt makers say it'll probably be Friday before everyone who wants a t-shirt gets one. It sure doesn't look like lack of support is going to be a problem here. At the Jaguar phone bank, 20 lines weren't enough. More had to be added later in the day. Even with the new lines, chances are you'll get a busy signal on the first try. But fans know what they want once they get through. We're very pleased and embarrassed and, uh, and apologetic that our phone lines are so difficult to get through on. Uh, that's as a, as a result of overwhelming demand. We're told that at any one time we have two to 3,000 people trying the lines. It's a compliment to Jacksonville that we're having these problems because of the vibe that we're receiving. It's remarkable. I still can't stick and believe it. It's unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your Jacksonville Jaguars. The teal, black, gold, and silver took center stage in a news conference today. The full uniforms were on display for the first time. Wayne Weaver said he's unsure of which division the Jaguars will end up in, but has an idea he doesn't want to compete with the Dallas Cowboys right away. We hope we're not in the conference with Dallas and Washington and some of those. That we'd rather have Charlotte and Tampa Bay to start with. Mayor Ed Austin got his own Jaguar jersey today and proclaimed this a day of celebration in Jacksonville. Uh, we're going to be celebrating a lot, Wayne, because we're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to, we won our franchise, but we're going to win some football games, too. Eh? This morning, I stepped off the plane. I uh, rode around the city, visited with some people, talked to a lot of folks, and I could literally feel the passion for the Jaguars. People getting on and off planes at the Jacksonville International Airport were quickly snapping up shirts for souvenirs. Uh, probably an extra large. Probably all gone. You're right. All the XLs are gone. You didn't order enough. There were signs all over the city that Jacksonville is now an NFL town. Some fans say seeing it in flashing lights is the only way they believe this is not just a dream. It's not just a dream, it's a reality. The man who made it a reality is here right now signing autographs, Jay Wayne Weaver. How does it feel? How does this reception feel here oh, it's tonight? Great. It's great. This is what it's all about. It's about the fans in Jacksonville how they rallied behind and supported this effort. This is the reason we've got the franchise, because of these people here. Wayne Weaver, Touchdown Jacksonville, the city of Jacksonville, and the people here by showing their passion, continued to design themselves as a NFL franchise, as an NFL city. And a lot of people said that, well, we got the team because of luck. Well, in this case, the design and the luck turned out to be the Jacksonville Jaguars.
Nobody is naive enough to believe that having a football team is going to solve all of the many problems that we as a community have, that, that all communities have. Nevertheless, I think that for those of us who live here, we're going to mark history in terms of the history before the NFL gave Jacksonville a franchise and the history of the city after Jacksonville got a franchise. And the thing, the thing I think this demonstrates is that good people can choose a goal and they can work doggedly to get it. And they can really do it. You know, I grew, I grew up in a town that had Major League Baseball, Major League Football, NFL Football, uh, Major League Hockey, just like you did, Major League Basketball, had, had everything. And uh, it really did give everybody something to talk about. Mm -hmm. There's a scene in a movie, in the movie Major League, which is a little movie about the Cleveland Indians going to the World Series. And in the end, the Indians win the World Series. And they cut to a shot in a, in a bar in Cleveland. And there's a guy standing there in a dirty t-shirt and a hard hat and a pair of jeans. And he's standing next to a guy in a cutoff t-shirt with a spiked hairdo. <laughs> you got the punker and you got the blue collar working guy. And they look at each other like, and then they go, Oh, what the heck, and they embrace, right. you know. <laughs> and it, to me, it, it kind of talks about what a, what a team can do for a town in terms of not solve problems, but at least get people to talk to one another about how they can fix what's going on in their it, city. It's, and it's a common refuge, okay? It's a place where people can come together and get away from their problems for a couple of hours and get refreshed and then go back and face the problems. It's about attitude. It is, Deb. It's about attitude. and. As of Wednesday morning, as of Tuesday afternoon, when Paul Tagliabue uttered the word Jacksonville, the attitude changed, and it's a dream come true, but we're not going to wake up from it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's right. re we're going to live it. That's exactly right. It is the greatest transfusion of self-esteem that I can think of this city ever receiving. And they put that needle right into the heart of the Gator Bowl. The greatest upset in sports history! Jacksonville will never be the same again. It will never be the same again, for good or ill. Though some people will say, gee, we'd like to go back to the good old Jacksonville. The good old Jacksonville is gone. This is a new city. It's a new world we're stepping into. We're, we're, you know, I think we're always a big league city. We are a super big league city today because of the NFL, period, paragraph. It will change the equation around here tremendously. felt like we'd died and gone to heaven that night. It's kind of like that movie, The Field of Dreams, when Kevin Costner says to the ghost of his father, is there really a heaven? And the father says, yes, it's the place where dreams come true. The other cities did not lose this uh, competition. Jacksonville won it. And if this city doesn't believe in itself now, we never will.
uh, it's my pleasure to announce that the uh, membership has selected Jacksonville as the 30th NFL club. This is a, a win for the Jacksonville community. We couldn't have done it without the tremendous support of both the citizens at large and the business community of Jacksonville. And we thank you. And we're going to have the darndest celebration beginning tonight. This is incredible. This is what this is all about. This community is the reason that we got this football team. And the support and the passion that this community has shown and our support of uh, the Jaguar effort. We have never had a better day than we've had today.